Hi, I'm Paul Roberts, uh, editor at ThreatPost.com and a security evangelist at Kaspersky Lab. I'm here with David M., who's a senior security researcher at Kaspersky for the latest edition of Lab Matters. Today we're going to be talking about password security, and uh, David's here with some great advice on how to keep your passwords to the websites and applications that you use secure and avoid getting hacked uh, or losing control of your account. David, welcome. Thanks a lot, Paul. So David, uh, tell me, what are some of the common password mistakes that people make, uh, things that they do wrong uh, when managing their passwords? Well, I think one of the temptations is that the more online passwords we need, that we recycle them. Mm -hmm. So I have David1, David2, David3, David4, and so on. Or many people just use the same password for every online account. They're two of the, probably the biggest dangers. Mm -hmm. Thanks for giving us all your passwords, by the way. Uh, and uh, <laughs> um, how do you, uh, uh, so people have a lot of websites and applications that they're trying to manage access to. It's easy to get confused. So instead of doing David one, two, three, four, what should they do? Well, first of all, people need to realize that actually passwords are the key to your online identity. Yeah, right. So the last thing you want to do is have the same key to every sort of piece of treasure you've got on the internet. Mm -hmm. So what people really need to do is to think of ways in which they can come up with passwords that are unique to each online account. Facebook, the bank, mm -hmm. Amazon, eBay, whatever it is they're logging into. Mm -hmm. Have a unique password. Because it, it sounds a lot easier than it actually is. You know, the danger that security professionals like us will say to people, use passwords sensibly, be careful. But really it needs a bit more advice about how do people be careful online with passwords. Okay, and unique, you don't mean just pick a word that no one's ever used before because that probably isn't going to work. What do you mean by unique? Well, first of all, go for something that's not in the dictionary. Okay. There are things out there which hackers use called dictionary attacks. And these are programs which will cycle through dictionaries looking for normal words that can be found in any dictionary. And they will try and use those speculatively to get into your account. Mm -hmm. So first of all, don't use real words. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the second piece of advice I would give is try not to use something that is obviously associated with you. Mm -hmm. So it might be, for example, that in a social network, you are disclosing some information about who you are, what your interests and hobbies are. Try not to use something that's obviously associated with you, that somebody could find out about you from some obvious online channel. Your partner's name or your children's name. Exactly, or, or you know, something to do with one of your hobbies or mm -hmm. something to do with a pet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So pick something that is not obvious in a dictionary, something that's not disclosed in some obvious way online about you. And I guess the third thing I would say is mix it up a little. Don't just go for letters, go for letters and numbers. Mm -hmm. Don't just go for letters and numbers, go for some non-alphanumeric mm -hmm. character like a, a semicolon or a, a, a full stop or you know, an exclamation mark, something like that, and mix the three up, jumble it up. Okay, so if you're mixing up and jumbling up words, how do you remember them without writing them down? Uh, that is real difficult. I mean, it may be that people have 20, 30, even 40 online accounts, mm -hmm. and you know, clearly you're not gonna be able to easily remember 40 passwords. So one great tip really is to come up with some formula for creating the password in, in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of reverse engineer that password every time, you, uh, that formula every time you need to put it into the system. I'll give you an example of what I mean. If I'm logging into Amazon, maybe I could start with Amazon as the beginning of my formula. And I have a sort of four step process which says, okay, take the first character, in this case an A, and move it to the end. The second step may be put a full stop after the third character. The third step may be capitalize the fifth character. And the fifth step then says, we'll take another of the characters and move its position in that string. So what you end up with from the starting point of Amazon, the resource you're logging into, you've scrambled it up using an easy to remember four step formula. And that four step formula works if you then go to eBay or if you then go to your bank or Facebook or anywhere else. Okay, so the name of the site then is the key to the passwords and then you're just using the same formula to scramble it. Exactly. Right? And there are alternatives. I mean, another alternative is to actually have a passphrase. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it may be that your starting point, you know, is something like the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which was the old phrase typed in by old-fashioned typists because it exercises every key mm -hmm. on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Start with that as your key phrase. You're going to remember your favorite passphrase. And then your four-step formula, 
messes with that passphrase. Okay. Um, and, and so you end up there with, you know, a, 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 a unique way of scrambling up that password. Okay. Um, I know also that uh, sometimes people have strong passwords, but they can lose access to their account or have that account taken over by a, a hacker uh, through other means, one of which is you know, those uh, question and answer um, uh, features that websites use if you forget your password. Those can be a, a tool that hackers use to take control of the account. Uh, can you talk about how that would work? Yeah, I mean, they can be. I mean, the danger, you, pe people that are designing passwords on sites know that people can forget them. So mm -hmm. there's normally some sort of challenge question, yes. where you were born, who your first teacher was, that kind of thing. And that, that will be the challenge for resetting your password. And of course, the danger is that some third party, somebody you don't know, a stranger or potential attacker, could apply to reset the password in your name. Now, on the upside, of course, you're going to be notified about that because you've predefined an email address to get notified about that. So if anything like that happens, if you get notified by the vendor uh, or the social network manager or whoever it is that thank you for updating your password and you think, look, I didn't do that, that's a warning that's bell a warning right sign. there. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And then for those challenge and response questions, pick things that somebody couldn't figure out about you just by looking at your LinkedIn or Facebook account. Exactly. And I always take the time on those things to choose the other option where I get to set what the challenge question will be rather than one of the standard ones that they provide. Okay. Good advice. Good advice. And um, password managers, there are all kinds. Uh, Kaspersky Lab has one with uh, its uh, antivirus software. Um, there are free versions of it. There are online password managers. What's your thought on those? Anything really that helps people deviate from the obvious thing of the same password or an easily recycled password has got to be a good thing. Um, so, you know, they're, they're a good idea. And, you know, if you look at the overall picture here, what we're trying to do as individuals is minimize the risk we take when we go online. Mm -hmm. That's make it harder, raise the bar. So just like at home, you install a burglar alarm, which minimizes the chance that you get burgled. Well, what we're looking to do with passwords is to minimize the risk we'll get attacked. If some application will produce a unique password for you and store that information, so much the better because you can then use hard to guess passwords. Okay, and writing passwords down, most people, uh, we, we often are warned against that, but you think not necessarily always a, a bad thing. Yeah, I, I do. I think, you know, if you look in the, in the enterprise, in the business world, there's always the risk that somebody else, possibly somebody who's visiting the company, might look over your shoulder at a, a password written down on a post-it note. So that's not a good idea. But let's face it, as individuals working from home, the chances of a, a cyber criminal also having physical access to look at a post-it note or a notepad, it's highly unlikely. So actually, it's not bad advice, but you've got to watch out a little bit because it may be that you, know, you don't want your teenage children to know what your account, your bank account password is. So you've got to be a little bit careful with it. Keep it in a secure place. Sure. Great. David, thank you so much for coming into Lab Matters and uh, talking with us about password security. Thanks, Paul. And thank you for joining us. You can check out more episodes of Lab Matters online on YouTube at youtube.com slash securelist, S-E-C-U-R-E-L-I-S-T. Thanks for joining us.